So if you've been around the channel for a while, well, you probably remember that fun times of to your convert, right? Get your shit out of the cloud. If you haven't, it was a cool little way where you could take a Raspberry Pi and you could take your ESP based to your device or whatever kind of other branded and you could do this kind of exploit where there was no soldering and it would just put Tasmoto or ESP home right on your device and boom, you took it out the cloud. But then Tuya did that whole thing of changing over chipsets and everything. Well, guess what? It's back, kinda. So we're gonna show you how to put ESP home calling it Libra to you right now, but I think that name's gonna change potentially in the future. And it will be hopefully, and I guess we'll get to that now. If you wanna do something to kind of help out things, there's a current pull request, and I'll leave that link down below, down in the description. And if this does work out for you, go ahead and let the ESP home developers know like, hey, go ahead and merge this on over so we can get this just in straight ESP home. and we could do without half of this damn video. Yeah, it's not crazy, but there's a whole lot of different little steps. So uh, buckle up. It's a lot of information. We got all the links down below for everything. I even got a full guide we'll go through and all the chapters, jump around, do your thing. You don't have to sit through this whole thing, but we're gonna show you everything. That's a lot of information. And yeah, we're gonna put ESP home on this Beckon chipset. Now, some of the things you're gonna need is, well, the easiest by far is a Raspberry Pi. And I know probably many of you are going, ah, oh, you seen the price of them lately, Travis? Yeah, absolutely, They're, it's, it's absurd. But I mean, everybody's not running this crap for your home assistant anymore. You probably got old pies sitting around, so you could probably use that. If you don't, no, if whatever, if you're still using a pie, it's, I guess it's okay. Um, if you've got a NUC somewhere, some computer, you got an old laptop. Now it just needs to have a Wi-Fi card or adapter or USB or whatever it may be on that particular computer that you can put Linux on it and you can have an access point Wi-Fi adapter. There are kind of some devices are not supported and some are. But there's so many different variations. I'm not gonna go through them. That's a whole different deal. If y'all wanna jump into Discord and say, hey, this one worked for me and that one did, whatever. I'm just gonna stick with a Raspberry Pi. You can do that probably on the Pi 3, Pi 4, and probably even some of the other models, the Zero or with, with the Wi-Fi adapter that's kind of built into them. I don't keep up with the whole models on that. So then of course you're gonna need a device that's on the supported list of the Tuya Cloud Cutter. And yeah, I'll leave all the links down below for you can go check through some of those. So pretty much the thing is gonna be the same of what I'm gonna show here with this particular little plug. And it's just a little nightlight plug. If I wanted to show you, I'll show you right quick what's inside, because that's always the fun part, right? This one I did pop open, it's just sonic welded. And it has LEDs, or it actually has five color LEDs around there. And just to see, I know you probably, this is gonna be jumping to a different video. Well, it will show how to actually do this without to your cloud cutter, if you have access to the chip. And I know you probably recognize this little chip here. And it looks almost like the ESP8266, that TYW3S, but this is that Beckon model. And I'll show you, we'll go through some different stuff and that's gonna be when we're doing some physical flashing of that, which that's gonna be coming soon. So do stay tuned for that. So this one's all gonna be, you don't have to open anything up, no soldering or whatnot. Just gonna be doing it with some little exploits and put ESP home on it. So buckle up, there's a lot of information. And if you'd like it, choose a comment down below or hit the like or whatever it may be. And I do appreciate it. And um, yeah, y'all take care and have fun. So of course, we gotta start out with the not so fun stuff. Yeah, 
this warning right here. Keep in mind that once you start to go down this path on your devices or whatnot, it's taking them out the cloud, cutting them from the cloud, whatever you want to call it. They're not going to work with your Tuya or smart home app or there because they're going to be local. So do make sure you want to do this before you kind of go down this path with your different devices. And I'd like to thank all the people behind this one. Um, I'm not going to try to pronounce, maybe I'll pronounce Tom's name. That one's fairly easy. Uh, there's a few other ones out there as well that have done things like COSID and everything. You've heard him like with some of the SwitchBot bulbs. Pretty cool to see some of the same names out here doing this stuff. Now, if you look, they do have a list of supported devices. They have this big list. Now, it's not very pretty list, but if you can find your various devices in there, rock and roll. Of course, I will never get to be able to purchase all those and get them done. Now, there are some other ways to submit some of your firmware dumps if there's not some on this list that you can go through some of the instructions on how to dump things. Now, that does require soldering if you have a device that they've never been able to do the exploit on and it doesn't work. That's probably a whole different path, which we're not going to cover. We're going to just go and pick some of the devices that we know actually work for this. Now, currently, I am continuing to build some of the stuff, some of the ones I get to do and play with and put an ESP home on them. I know they do have that firmware, that open beckon. It's kind of like Tasmoda in a way, but then not really. There is a little bit of, a, of internet drama tied in with that, and I probably don't want to touch that one. And also... It, I have messed around with it, but in my opinion, at this time, it just felt like a learning a third firmware. I kind of dabbled in Tasmoda, of course, and then ESP Home. And at this time, I just said, hey, this is already ESP Home. It's just a different chip. So then I don't have to learn anything new. I don't have to whole, learn a whole different third firmware. But maybe in the future, we'll get into the open backend as well, but not at this time in this video. Now, right now, I am doing some of the devices. I'm just mixing them all in the devices on my digiblur.com website. I'll leave the link down there if you can't spell it. But I have put, we talked about doing some icons. Right now, I'm just doing the red B. It could change in the future. That's going to show like that Beckon chipset. And it has all the setups and the ESP Home Yama, we will copy that straight in. And of course, as I do other ones, we'll, or other people add them, we'll put them in here as well. So kind of multiple places where you can go see what people have done things. And of always, you can find that Discord link down there and go jump in and go chit chat on the digiblur.com Discord server. So enough of that, let's go ahead and get started. And I will do a complete guide on my website. That way you can just follow through that instead of just watching the damn video or you can just see how I did this. It totally, to, however you want to do it, it does not matter to me. Now they talk about the 0, 2W, 3, or 4 currently right now. And I did run into an issue and this was, I was so glad they had this in the guide, was this version of Bullseye. So that's what we're going to go get first is get the correct version of Bullseye. 220404 Raspberry iOS or Raspi, I, whatever, not iOS, Travis. Bullseye, it's for the arm and it's light. We're going to grab this big one that's 297 megs. And then we'll use, you will need, of course, the little micro SD card, if you want to see that there, right? Everybody knows a micro SD card. We're going to load this up and get it prepared for our pie. If you know this part already, go ahead and skip through that and get on to the part where you're getting into the actual pie. The markers are down there in the chapters. Now, I am going to use the Raspberry Pi imager and makes it stupid simple. And we can go ahead and fire it up now. We're going to say choose OS. And remember, we downloaded that older version of Bullseye. Now, if they do update the guide where I had some issues, then just take, if you want to use the latest, if they say the latest works now after the guide's updated, go ahead. You may be able to skip this, but I'm just going to use the older version because it works. So I'm going to say use custom. And I got that two. Let's get this out the way. It's confusing me. It was the same images. So then we got that 2022. We're going to choose storage. That's my little SD card, 32 gig. 
one thing I do like to check because it makes me lazy, you can come in here and set SSH. That way you don't have to do that little workaround and put the file on there. This does it automatically. It's pretty sweet. Just enable SSH. I'm using password authentication. You can do whatever you want. It's just going to be local. You're not setting this out on the internet to do your thing there. I'm not configuring wireless LAN because remember, we need to use that for the exploit. So when you do plug in your Pi, it needs to be connected to Ethernet. So find out where you can put that and you need to be nearby your devices. I'd probably say in the same room, maybe up to 10 feet or so just makes it, you know, reliable connection because sometimes the Pi kind of sucks on the Wi-Fi. So I did have my local settings, keyboard layout, et cetera. Yep, that's all good. And I'm going to hit right and yep, I want to erase it and hurry up and wait. We will jump ahead. All right, so now we got it's been written. We'll do continue and we'll go ahead and close it and we'll eject the card and then we'll go put it in our Pi. Connect your Pi up, Ethernet, like I said. If you want to see the screen, go ahead and connect up a screen to it, like a you know, TV or whatever it may be, HDMI, because sometimes they do take a little bit to boot that first time, but it's just not really necessary. And you, we're just going to use SSH anyway. So I'm going to use PuTTY for SSH. You're more than welcome to use whatever favorite tool you'd like to get the job done. So put in the IP address, go find your router, whatever, whatever the Raspberry Pi is, and go ahead and connect to it with regular SSH. So I got my security breach because this is the first time I've used this IP and it's got a different key. I'll just, I know I did it. Hit accept. And I'm using that password that I set on the Pi image writer. Now, first thing I do like to do because, yeah, it's right there in your face. Wi-Fi is currently blocked. So I'm going to go ahead and use Rasby config. You do have to use sudo rasp config. And if you go into localization options, go to WLAN country and set your country code for your Wi-Fi. Then it says wireless LAN set to US. Yep. I'm a tab, tab, going to finish. And it says, yep, we want to reboot now. And you'll get an error message from Putty saying it disconnected. If you don't have a screen hooked up to it, go get you something to drink, come back. It didn't take long, long to reboot, especially I think this is a Pi 4, but maybe on the Pi 3 it may take a little longer. So the next thing is I'm just going to leave this behind because there are a few steps that you need to do for to make this Pi work correctly for using to your cloud cutter. And this is basically just gonna allow us to write that firmware to that device, just like the old days of to your convert. And sudo, we'll copy that one, paste, hit enter, and I'll edit this out so you don't sit through all this boring crap. I so need an editor. <laughs> one of these days. So we'll hit yes. It says you need to edit DHCPD configuration. We're going to add this line deny interfaces WLAN. So then right click paste page down all the way to the bottom. We'll get this in our clipboard and we'll paste hit enter and I'll do control O to write out file name write out and then control X and that exits right back out. And if you did want to check to make sure you should be able to do cat D H C P C D comp. And that should list your deny interfaces WLAN zero. So then we're going to do sudo and they say, make your file look like this. So we will just slide this down, make it a little easier. So main, Plugins, yep, that's all the same. Now they want a line in here that says DHCP equals internal. And then we'll leave this one there and then that's it. And we'll control O again and exit. And if you really want to cat it, you can and look at it, it's up to you. The next section, reboot the Pi using sudo reboot. Pretty simple so far. Just taking commands, throwing them in and doing things. Now the next step we're going to do, let's see why that reboots. 
we're going to install Docker. Now, don't worry. It's stupid simple. Again, we're just copying and pasting stuff. We're actually going to put two Docker containers. We're actually going to build a Docker container. And I'll get to that once we reboot because potentially you can skip this crap once they merge that. So please, ESP Home Devs, merge this so we don't have to do this crap and build that second Docker container. So I'm done with my rant. We will copy this command. I believe Tony made this guide from what I remember seeing. So definitely thanks to Tony for going through this. It's just super sweet to go through and just copy and paste, copy and paste. This takes a little bit of time. So uh, let's jump to the next. Install git. Looks like mine's already installed. And then we will clone the Tuya Cloud Cutter repo. And that doesn't take too long. Now, here's the step that we're going to divert a little bit here, because then the next part says, hey, we're going to run to your cloud cutter. And that's going to take this plug, which currently has stock firmware on it. That's going to take the firmware we make for ESP home and put it on there so we can bring it straight into home assistant. But because they don't have it merged yet, we need to go and build our own Docker container. That way we can make our GUI because there's currently only a fork of ESP Home Libra Tuya or whatever the name they're going to change it to. But that doesn't chipset. You can't take the YAM and paste it into your Home Assistant that you install as your add-on for Home Assistant just yet. Hopefully that'll change in the future and you can skip this whole damn section. So guess I'll leave a comment or in the description or whatever if you can skip this section. So all my commands, I don't have it on my web page yet. Yeah, shame on me, procrastinator. But I'll put all these commands to go through in the guide. That way you can make your Docker container. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to clone into and get Libra to your ESP home. Because it's going to make a dashboard on this Pi 4 to manage your device, you know, to write new firmware changes, etc. So... You can see how this would be so much easier if it was just in your regular Home Assistant Docker stack or add-ons or whatever. Eventually, hopefully it will be. So then we'll go change into the folder. And since this is an ARM build, which because we're on a Pi 4, now if you are doing this on a little Nook or something like that or a, a laptop that's, you know, AMD 64, then you'll need to change your tags for that. So what this does take a little bit of time, I think like five, 10 minutes, depending on things. So just let it eat. While that's building, we're going to switch over and go grab the YAML for the globe motion light on digiblur.com. I just going over here to the devices section. If you're going to the regular page where it has the news, where I sometimes put stuff, just hit devices up here and you come over here to plugs. And again, I talked about this is that ones with the different icon. Currently, I'm using the red B for the Beckon ones. And we'll scroll down. If you want to look at the layout, you can. If you want to look at the pictures of it, whatever. Um, or if you even want to edit the page, more than welcome to do that. And we will have the ESP YAML right here. We're going to take and just hit that good old copy and paste. And we're going to paste that into the GUI that we build on our Pi 4 to build this firmware. But you can see it's normal ESP home code. So the only thing it really is different is the board. You know, it has this Libra to you stuff in here. That's the only thing that's different right now. And everything else, if you're familiar with doing ESP home, like there's the GPIO for the motion sensor. There's a restart button. Here's the stuff for doing the cold white, warm white, you know, RGB and puts it together so you can have one light entity. So it's all normal code for ESP Home. You could do automations in there if you wanted to, to couple, you know, say the motion to some of the LEDs or whatever it may be. It's just ESP Home. Nothing really new to learn, which is pretty awesome. Everything built successfully. And then we will go start the Docker container to run this stuff and build our firmware. So, of course, I'll leave this again on my little guide so you can just copy and paste this. That will be on digiblur.com, the link somewhere when I get to put it before the video releases. And you should get this crazy code. I could be the same probably. But uh, 
Basically, it's saying that it did start that Docker container. We should be able to open a browser and go to the IP that you're using to SSH to with port 6052. And look at that. It's ESP Home, just like you've always known. It's We just hit new device. If you're familiar with ESP Home, yep. We're going to hit continue. We're going to give it a name. We're going to do that globe motion uh the network name we're going to give it our this is going to be your ssid that this does connect to so do put in the right network name and password we'll hit next and there's libra to you that's pretty cool they built all this in we're going to hit libra to you it doesn't really matter at this point what board it is even though it is the 7231t you can go ahead and pick it, make you feel warm and fuzzy. We're going to overwrite all that with this YAML there from the Digibird.com website. Hit next. And we're just going to hit skip because we just want to build the firmware. I do have Dark Reader on, so it throws this off, I found. So, yeah, but then I get blinded by the light. One thing I do in here, I do have an issue with the discovery of the IPs. And I guess the way MDNS doesn't work or doesn't want to work. So I use static IPs in mine. You don't have to do it that way. But I'll show you kind of when I go in the YAML and put that in. So I'll hit edit. And this is all, you know, the stuff that's just generic in here. So we're going to go back here, hit the little copy thing here. It should put the green check mark. You know, it's in your clipboard. Come back here. I'm going to hit control A, nuke it all, and then paste in what I had in here. Now, if you don't have that same issue that I have and just what you can use your dynamic IPs or whatever, you can just leave that there and it should work just fine. So we'll hit save and you can go through here and let's just hit validate green check mark good deal so i want to show you that little tip i do i put all my ip addresses in my secrets and i do outside of my dhcp scope and that way i don't have any dynamic ips going to these and then i just keep them all in one spot in here that way i don't have to go reference them anywhere and it keeps things pretty simple for me yeah you saw my wonderful password there so I like to put in just these so I don't have to continue to always put, they're not really secrets, but whatever. Then I'll just continue to put down the IP addresses of all my different ESP home devices. Like I may say plug one and two, and I just increment, you know, my IP addresses that way they're all in here and I can, you know, manage them in this one little secrets file. And then all I do need to do is go back in the YAML and I do have to set the static IP, the gateway, subnet, DNS, etc. But that's all driven out of that secrets file and I can keep everything in one spot. I'll go ahead and leave in the AP mode for if it doesn't connect to the Wi-Fi, it'll go throw the AP mode of like globe motion and the password is just ESP not home. And just, hey, it's not home, it's not on the Wi-Fi, right? So we'll hit save. And now we'll just go ahead and hit install. And it's not going to put it on there just yet because we've got to cloud cut it first. We're going to hit manual download and we're going to hit modern. This can take a little while to build the firmware depending on what you have. Give it time. It's going to pull everything down and then it will actually have the firmware on the Raspberry Pi. And we just need to go ahead and move it over. There's multiple ways to do that, but I'm going to show you one way that's really simple to me. So it's done. And it's going to download a UF2 file to your computer at this time. You don't need that file. You need the UG file. And that does get built, but we need to go get it manually. Um, that would be kind of cool if maybe they'll have it download the UG file automatically for you. You can see it um, right here. See, it says UG bin. But we're going to go use, I like to use WinSCP, and that's just straight WinSCP. You're more than welcome to use whatever other tools. And if you want to browse to it manually using the command line and move it over that way, you're more than welcome to do that as well. So basically, we can kind of cheat by, if you look, it says Pi Environments Globe Motion. That's where we need to go look. So if we look over... I have the Docker container running to OPT, ESP Home, and you should see .ESP Home. I know it is kind of small. I think it's build, 
globe motion. Yeah, we're continuing to get deep. Pi, oh, globe motion, finally, we're there. And you can see there is that BK7231 OTUG bin, right? That's the one we need. Make sure you grab the UG. And I'm gonna drag it over here to my computer. We do need to rename, let's just go ahead and rename it, globe motion ESP home. If we come all the way back, now the cool part is, once we do this and flash it, using to your cloud cutter thing one time, you won't have to do this again. You can just, if you need to update something on it, change it, you'll do it over the air, just like you would ESP home. We'll go back to home, did you blur or whatever your ID is you log in with for your computer or Pi. Look for to your cloud cutter and then there'll be custom firmware and you need to drag your bin file over there. So if you want to do that manually using command line and copy and dig through there and copy, go right ahead. Cause you know, it was kind of around the world. I copied it my computer and put it back. It's kind of stupid, but whatever. I've done dumber things in my life. So we got our firmware built, got it all good to go. Now we need to take Tuya off of this damn thing, right? So let's go ahead and finish out the guide. So we jumped off right here and it says run cloud cutter with pseudo such and such now remember always do the dash r because that's for the pi it resets that network manager so we'll go back over here to tuya cloud cutter go ahead and run this it the first time you do run it, it has to build a docker container which takes a good bit but once you do this that first time and you know the second it's not going to take that long in the second while that's running i have my little power strip here we will plug in there let's turn my light off so y'all can see the wonderful fun of blinking this is a stock plug it's there's i've done nothing to it i didn't even put it in the stupid to you app took it out of the box well i did kind of open it so you could see inside of it but took it out the box and pretty much plugged it in that is it you can see it's in fast blinking trying to pair mode we're not going to pair it up just yet let's wait for this all right so once it's built we're going to do we're not going to detach from the cloud i don't want to do that I want to go full bore and just make it mine totally. That's number two. Now it should show up our bin file. There's our globe motion. That's the one we copied over previously and built with ESP home. If you skip that part, uh, you should probably go back because you need to build your firmware. By manufacturer, I'm going to go ahead and pick down. Now if you're doing a different device, you need to pick your different device. I'm picking globe electric and motion nightlight. Pretty cool little menus. And this is going to be this, the firmware version. I'm just only got one to pick out of this one. And it does say put it in slow blink mode. So hold this button down. I think it's like five or six seconds on this one. And it's probably going to reset and go to fast blink mode potentially. Yeah, I don't want fast blink. I want slow blink. So now you can see it's doing the exploit. It's going to connect to the access point made by that plug. Follow along. Very important part. Don't skip this. It's going to look like it's doing it again. You're going to cycle the power. Unplug it and plug it back in. Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn on that. It looks like it's connecting, but don't worry. Turning it back on. Now, you need to put this back into slow blink mode again after you cycle the power. Now, it looks like it is in slow blink mode already, so I'm not going to touch it. If it didn't, we would need to do hold the button down, etc. Give it time. It should pick up the access point. It may say it failed, but just be patient. It's going to research for it and wipe the network manager. That's the whole Raspberry Pi fun, I think. But um, it should find another access point. Boom. See the different access point? It's got that A. Now we know that that has been exploited and it did work. So it's gonna to connect to the access point. It's gonna run some stuff. This is the cool part. So just be patient. This is, I'll just say it's badass. Okay, see how long it took? It does take a while, but you see that's good so far. It's gonna send over, 
is sending over our globe motion, triggering update, firmware update in progress. It's working, guys. Look, I just saw it flicker. Now, watch my ping session behind here if we can uh, drag it over here without covering up the fun. It says firmware file has been sent. Check for signs of activity. I just saw it cut off. And we'll see if it attaches. Look at that. Boom. On my network and pinging. Now, this is I, I still awesome so many times I've done this, but um, it's so freaking cool. Because if you've used ESP Home, you know what this is. This is the freaking web page where you can do whatever. And this is the web server of the actual device. It's yours. It's out the damn cloud. You didn't solder it. It doesn't have an ESP chip, but guess what? You put freaking ESP home on it. How badass is that? Now let's go bring it in a home assistant. Doesn't do auto discovery on ESP home devices. Yours will probably just have it in there. I think it's just due to my different network connections and stuff and whatnot. So I'll just manually add it myself. ESP home, even though there's no ESP in it. Um, I'll put the IP address in there, leave it there. Boom, we got our unnamed device. Hit finish, have, once this syncs up, and I did hit F5 to refresh it, and should be able, look at that, the light turns on. And the entity is, um, yeah, I hate this. Then you gotta click color, and but look at this. There's blue, there's red, purple, it freaking works and it's just a night light it's not stupid bright um the of course the warm whites and stuff will be brighter on it than um other things but you know the warm white pretty cool that they have all the colors built into it and then you should see watch the motion it says right here it says clear it's got detected motion Everything freaking works. Now, the only thing bad I will say right now, because again, things aren't merged, is the dashboard is over on your Pi. The one that, you know, it's just sitting on your Pi. So it's now, it should be showing online here shortly. I guess it's probably because I need to go enable the ping. That's why. Um, because my different network config, but it actually does work. I should say logs and see. Yeah, you can see it does work. So it's seeing it. If we did want to make any YAML changes and whatnot in here, we can hit install and you can just do it wirelessly. So let's go ahead. I just want to give it a shot and let's just see wirelessly. It should rebuild and do everything and it will send over using OTA. And you can actually watch in the background if we don't cover them both up. And it should, you'll be able to see it drop out and come back. So that whole long process of doing the cloud cutter and everything, once you cut them out to cloud, they're your devices. And then you can just OTA them. Look, it's uploading like you normally would. And you don't have to do anything special and mess with the pie and all that. So hopefully they will get this merged in the future and be part of the normal build of ESP Home. So yeah, look, it dropped out off my network. And it should come back here once it flashes and reconnects. I see it turned on. It should connect back to the Wi-Fi, get an IP address. Boom, there it is. It's back and should be going in Home Assistant as well. We'll just refresh the page. There it is. We've cloud cut things, put ESP Home on it. What else more do you want? That's badass. Look at all the freaking devices when I was scrolling through it and everything. I'm gonna go look through some of the weird, really devices that I can't get in ESPs. Like I know, Right now, of course, we can get a bunch of stuff that are come with ESPs and you don't have to do this. Some of them even come pre-flashed, like the SwitchBot ones aren't, well, those aren't pre-flashed, but the SwitchBot bulbs, those are stupid simple. You don't need to do anything to upload Tasmoda ESP Home to those. 
uh, Cough, Cloud Free, those are pre-flash. Martin Jerry has all their pre-flash stuff, the switches and the dimmers. And so that's all going to be easy to run ESP Home and Tasmoda and just they come pre-flash for you. But the really weird stuff, yeah, we don't really have a fan controller that has a dimmer and fan speed anymore without having to swap the chip. And I know not everybody wants to do that. So there's some other weird stuff I want to go through myself and see what I can go do. And potentially I'll add them. And if you do some stuff, let me know. Come join Discord, post pics and everything and what stuff you converted. And um, yeah, take your shit out of the cloud. Let's get it done. I appreciate you watching this long ass video ton of info hopefully you'll get enough out of it and i do appreciate all the support all the patreon members and youtube members who definitely couldn't do it without you and y'all press all the buttons down there and y'all take care